Um, Maceo, congratulations on making the final four. You, those two threes you hit real late in the game when Arkansas was kind of making their run. What did it feel like to hit those big shots to propel you to the first final four since 1950 for Baylor? Uh, you know, my teammates, uh, they kept finding me. I think like two two possessions before that, uh, Jared, he drove baseline, uh, looked somebody off and threw it to me in a corner. Like looked the opposing uh, player off and threw it to me in a corner and uh, I shot it and I missed it. And uh, when I was running down the floor, they, I remember my teammate saying, good shot. I can't remember who it was that said it, but I heard somebody say, good shot, shoot again. So I got another opportunity. They found me and uh, I hit it. Then I saw when Damian drove, I saw him like look at me before he drove and uh, to see like where the defense is going to be. And he found me and I uh, knocked another one down. So the credit goes to those guys uh, for keeping uh, faith in me. All right. Our next question comes from Jerry Hill. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Uh, Maceo, uh, that stretch um, answered, uh, Arkansas had closed it to four. You guys never seemed to panic. Y'all seemed to always answer when they would, you know, and this is a team that had had some really good comebacks. Talk about the way that y'all maybe stayed calm. Uh, you know, we've been in the fire before. Uh, it's not our first time in the fire. Uh, we just got to continue to compete at a high level. And uh, Arkansas, they got a good bunch of group. Of, they got a good bunch in their uh, program, a lot of older guys. So uh, we knew they wouldn't give up as well. But I mean, they also have young guys on their team. But I feel like they're, they have a lot of older guys. And when you have older veterans on their team, like it comes with good leadership. And uh, they're not going to allow the young guys to quit. You know, they got a lot of fight in them. So uh, we know that they were the comeback kids, uh, came back from 14, 10, and 12 in their first three games. And uh, we just tried to seal them off. All right, our next question comes from John Werner. Yeah, John Werner, Waco Tribune. You're on Ma Maceo, what does this mean to you making the Final Four, and what does it mean to the program? It means a tremendous a lot uh, to me, but uh, even more to the program. Uh, no, pl no person is bigger than the program. What we did is history here. Uh, really happy for uh, Coach Drew. He's been here for 18 years, and uh, I saw on Twitter probably about a month ago that uh, we need, like, I saw somebody tweet something along the lines of we need to start speaking on the uh, that Scott Drew has like the biggest comeback story and has built, has like come back from nothing basically in a basketball program. And uh, people need to start talking about that. And uh, so I'm really happy for Coach Drew. He spent a lot of time, dedication, hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into this program. And I'm really happy for those guys, him and Coach Tang and the guys on the coaching staff. All right, our next question comes from Matt Roberts. Yeah, Maceo, Matt Roberts, Fox 44 TV. Uh, for you, when you transferred here, uh, is this something that, that you saw and envisioned with this group that, that you would be here cutting down nets, going to the Final Four? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, if you let Davion tell it, he's going to tell you that he's the reason I came to Baylor. But uh, one of the, on a serious note, though, uh, he did text me and say that um, if I came here, he felt like we could make it to a Final Four. And uh, we, we've done that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we'll, and, that, and that didn't just happen overnight. That was three years ago uh, when him and I got here. And uh, the team, they built themselves up uh, the year that we sat out. Uh, we were supposed to project you to go like last in the Big 12 or second to last came and I think fourth, made it to the NCAA tournament. And then we hit the ground running our uh, the year after that, my last year. And then uh, this year we hit the ground running again as well. So uh, we got a lot of guys committed to the program and uh, bought in. And we all know that the program is bigger than us. So uh, we're really bought into that. Our next question comes from Dan Wolken with USA Today. Yeah, Maceo, uh, Co Coach Drew's been at this a long time. Like you said, 18 years, uh, he's been trying to get to a Final Four. And, and obviously the story of the program is, has been well chronicled. But why, why does he connect with you guys? I mean, he's, you know, he, he's, he's a really nice guy. He's maybe a little bit of a corny guy at times. <laughs> Well, why does he sort of connect with uh, with this team? I think he connects because he cares about us. Like when I first got here, um, like I, I honestly it was like like I was unsure of the guy. You know, uh, when when you get recruited, uh, college basketball players will tell you this. Like when you get recruited, like coaches they kind of switch up. Uh, when you get to a school, it's like they show you all the good stuff. When you get to the school, they're not like really catering to you as much and things like that. And um, I mean, he wasn't really catering to me as much, and I, I didn't expect him to. I mean, I was 21 years old when I got here, or maybe I was 20. I'm not really sure, but um, but yeah, when I got, I didn't really want him to like cater to me or anything like that. But uh, I've 
Like, so I, I was kind of iffy about him when I first got here. But as time went on, I truly understood it. Like, Coach Drew, like, truly cares about his players. Like, he asks you how you're doing. Uh, like, he, he tries to get to know players. Like, he tries to keep the connection. Uh, he tries to, like, pull you aside uh, just, just to continue to build a rapport with you because he knows that on the floor, like, we're, like, the leaders on the team are an extension of him on the, uh, on the floor. So uh, he just tries to just try to build a trust in a relationship and it's just not for basketball like he really cares like i saw that uh baylor sent i think it's matt saban i think that's his name i'm not really sure i i, I don't think i met him but uh baylor sent like a care package to one of the former players who i don't even know I, he probably played here in like 2007 you uh, know like he's just staying connected with guys so he like truly cares about the people in the program truly cares about people and uh trying to put people in the best situation as possible and uh i feel like that's the reason that coach drew connects with people because uh we feel that he cares about us all right, our next question comes from Paul Catalina. Paul Catalina, Sigum 365 Radio. Maceo, you guys are so ridiculously confident uh, in, in kind of an unassuming way. Was there ever a moment in any of these games, in any of the season, where that confidence wavered? Or were you guys at 100 as confidence from the jump of the season on the way down? No, I don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't think we ever like lost confidence. Uh, who, do, who do we lose to first? Kansas. We, when we lost to Kansas uh, at Kansas, it was just like, uh, I mean, we, we had to lose eventually. Uh, then we lost, uh, but we, we felt like we weren't in our best. Like we felt that we had to uh, diagnose some things, uh, correct some things going forward. And uh, we felt like we would uh, continue to get better as the season went on. And we didn't want to peak in, in January. We want to peak at the time that we're peaking right now. Uh, we just want to continue to get better even going into this last week. Awesome. Our next question comes from Zach Brazilier with the New York Post. Um, Zach Brazilian, New York Post. Maceo, Villanova tried to slow you guys down. Um, Arkansas tried to slow, you know, speed you guys up. Didn't really seem like either style ultimately worked. What does that show you kind of say about your team and what how what you guys are obviously capable of? Uh, I feel like that shows that we got real hoopers on our team. Uh, we can play any style of basketball and um, we can adjust to certain situations and uh, we can overcome it all. All right, our next question comes from Chuck Carlton. Yeah, Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. Uh, Maceo, this was the closest game you had in the tournament, uh, nine points. Um, at, at the same time, it doesn't look like you put a complete game together just yet. Do you think you're, you played your best basketball yet in the tournament? Uh, I feel like we played uh, better games, but uh, as long as we continue to win, uh, that's all that matters to us. Uh, we got to get, get better going forward. Uh, going into our next game on Saturday against Houston, a uh, tough team. And uh, we just look forward to that matchup coming up soon. All right, our next question comes from Chris Williams. Yeah, Macy, obviously a big win today and congratulations. But are you guys still able to approach every game just like another faceless opponent? Or do you feel it building and getting bigger and bigger each week? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't think that uh, there's any more pressure going into these games than, uh, than another game. I feel like today it was um, like a game that we played on January 30th, the uh, Big 12 versus SEC matchup. And uh, I feel like that's all it was today. And uh, just going forward, we just got to be locked in uh, and not get caught up in the moment. Nice. Our next question comes from Kevin Lundquist. Yeah. Maceo, you guys were in a position last year where you could have been in this position last year. So what does – the feeling of appreciating this moment now mean to you guys that you're finally here going to the final four? That means the world. I mean, but all glory goes to God in uh, these situations, uh, win or lose. I mean, God still brings us here and uh, we're here for his glory. And um, we're just we're just really happy that uh, everything is working out the way it is right now. Um, we got a good group of guys in the locker room, guys who sacrifice a ton uh, for, the for the greater good. And uh, everybody, like I said earlier, is just bought into the program. All right, next up we'll have Andrew Miner. <clears throat> yeah, Macy, you know, Andrew Miner, 24-7 sports. I want to ask you about two plays. One one in the first half, Matt Meyer had a steal and lobbed it up to you. You had to chase down uh, before it went out of bounds and got a layup. And then in the second half, after he hit those two threes, he had a uh, drive for, for a layup attempt and missed, but Flint Mark uh, was able to slam it home for kind of the exclamation point. I was wondering if you could take me through those two plays and then kind of just describe uh, how – 
you know, how, how great everybody has kind of their role on the team uh, because it was a very evenly uh, distributed game today if you look at the box score. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, everybody's bought into their role. Like, we all know that we have a role to play. Uh, it could be anybody's night on any given night. I mean, uh, in West Virginia, I think Jared, he had like 20-something. Then Day had like 20-something. Matt had like 20-something. So um, so it's anybody's night on any given night. And it, like, it wasn't my night. I, I didn't play well that game in particular. But um, but everybody, like, steps up. Like, everybody has a role to play. Everybody fulfills their role. Like, Mark, uh, he does a great job setting screens. Flo does a great job setting screens uh, and rebounding. So does John. Uh, Flaggy comes off the bench, gives us a spark pretty much every single game that he comes off the bench. And, um, like, guys are just really brought, bought in to, to the – to the things that we do in our program. Thank you. All right, our final question will come from Curtis Quillian. Thanks, you, Curtis Quillian, KCEN Channel 6 in Waco. You guys trailed in each of the first three games here in Indianapolis. Today, you led wire to wire. What was the biggest adjustment you guys made from the Villanova game to tonight? Um, I mean, it was a different style of play. Um, felt like Villanova competed at a high level. Arkansas competed at a high level as well. And uh, I just felt like we executed down the stretch.